Welcome back to our discussion on The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. We're glad you stopped by. Say hello in the comments or email us at thegalamoffergals at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter. We're excited to meet fellow book lovers and book lovers to be and to have conversations with you. Thanks again for hanging out. We hope you're amused and inspired to keep reading and to engage in dynamic conversations. So um, after our little break, um, so how did you feel about the character of Carl Iverson when he was first introduced? Um, and just for a little context again, um, we, we first met Carl Iverson in the nursing home, um, right in the beginning of the book. Um, and I think he might have had, does he have cancer? He, he has, has pancreatic, yeah, he has, he has cancer. pancreatic cancer and he's not looking too well and he's in a wheelchair. Um, and all we know at this point in the very beginning is what he allegedly had done. So how did you guys feel about him when he was first introduced? So this was the question I asked because like when you first meet him, yeah, you get the person right at the like receptionist pretty much being like, oh, hey, he killed someone. Like, you know, we, you know, he's in this like not great room or whatever. He's in a wheelchair. He's just staring out the window when he actually gets to meet him. He doesn't get to meet him the first day that he asks about mm -hmm. doing a biography for someone. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like they did a good job of just, like, basically setting him up to be the bad guy from the beginning. Like, they piled that on really hard. <laughs> I feel like they're just like, just just keep keep dropping hints that he's, he's a <laughs> terrible guy. Like, just keep doing that. Um, but, like, overall, like, I understand, like, why he was, Carl was just kind of like, well, I kind of want to, you know, make sure that someone that's going to tell the story as it actually is and not... Mm -hmm how everyone keeps telling it is when it's not like that. Yeah, I appreciated that he he did kind of vet, he kind of vetted Joe before getting started with the whole um, interview, which I thought was really, um, I thought that was really important too. I mean, considering mm -hmm. who he actually is. Um, if he, you know, he wanted his, his last, his last truth known or whatever, like his, you know, I thought that was really, that was really good. And I don't really know how that made me feel in terms of whether or not I was gonna, like, whether or not he was actually a bad guy or not. Like, it didn't give me any reason to believe that he was actually innocent or not innocent. <laughs> um, so it, it just seemed like that was the way he was, and he was, you know, it kind of gave an insight into his character a little bit. Um, that he seemed a little more, he seemed a little more down to earth and like, hey, I'm not going to rush through this, you know, I'm just going to, we're here for the truth, and if, if you're not interested in, in the bare bones, then, then we're not doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I guess right off the bat, I I did believe that he was guilty just based on what we were told. Mm -hmm. Like it just seemed obvious that all of the evidence pointed in his direction, <laughs> just given what we were given. Um, and I was just really interested to see where the author was going to take us. Like if if he was going to take us, you know, that he actually was guilty, but maybe there was, you know, some other more noble reason that we should believe he's a decent guy despite everything like mm -hmm. yeah i was just really interested to see where that was gonna go and and i 
agree that, you know, we, he was painted well, because that's what he was convicted of rape and murder. But he also had spent 30 years in prison, which can also change people, I think, for the bad or for better or worse. I mean, mm -hmm. it changes people. Mm -hmm. And people are not the same person. I mean, mentally, emotionally, most people are not the same at 60 as they were at 18 or 20. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you change a lot, your perceptions change, your beliefs change. Mm -hmm. and, and so when Carl had said, you know, I want, when he first, when he talked to Joe and he said, oh, why should I talk to you? You're just a rich pup just trying to, you know, go to school on your family's money and blah, 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 and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And Joe got mad and said, you don't know anything about mm -hmm. me. And Carl was like, you don't know anything about me either. Mm -hmm. You think you do, but you don't. Mm -hmm. And so that made me think, okay, maybe there's something, maybe he didn't do it and he took the fall for someone that he knew or whatever, like mm -hmm. maybe his friend that came and visited him all the time. I don't know. So I was kind of torn. I mean, I did have like, oh, you know, he's probably guilty, but then it's like, oh, maybe he's not guilty. Otherwise there wouldn't be a story. Right. right. <laughs> That's true. Right. When he said that, I thought he was going to like, I don't know, either be, tell the story of his innocence or, like it was just a manipulation trick yeah because i was still sort of convinced that the story was going to go down somewhere darker with yeah. joe being involved in committing crimes mm -hmm. yeah at i don't know carl's suggestion or just getting inside carl's head maybe he'd go in too deep and i don't know do something i don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. at that That's point fair. of the book yeah <laughs> i mean that was right away in the beginning so mm -hmm. i mean it makes sense mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so I guess following up on, on that, uh, would you have gone to the lengths that Joe did after hearing Carl's story? Like, Joe, like, straight up just dives right in and, like, starts trying to figure out what happened. And mm -hmm. Personally, I don't think I would have done that. I would have been like, okay, well, I'm sorry that this happened to you, like, if you didn't do it, but... I don't know that I would be like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure through. this out. I'm going to drive up to this guy's house and try and get a confession from him. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, but maybe it's because I'm not brave, but I also think it was kind of stupid. So yes. Yeah, that was a little stupid of him. Like, I feel like I would have felt the inner pull to like, like bring it to the police and like yeah. keep fighting to like reopen it i mean and i know he he did try to make that case and they're like oh yeah when we get to it and he's like no he's gonna die <laughs> like we need to but right like i don't know if i would have went full on like vigilante to try and get closure before he died like but right i feel like i would have tried to do legally tried to make someone listen to my story i think I the one of the turning points was um the code breaking i think that yes. was a big turning point for joe's decision to because without the code being broken um with the help of jeremy um i don't think that i don't think well i don't think that the that he would have gotten anywhere farther with it for one thing sure and, and um, i don't think he totally believed he was innocent until right. The code was broken. Right. And yeah. That was the turning point. Yeah. 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 I think that was. So if you know someone is totally innocent, I know. And they had question. a relationship by then too, so it, mm -hmm. it wasn't like it was a complete stranger. But it wasn't like a close relationship at this point. Like at the no. point of. That's true, and he's already so. out of prison and just gonna pass away soon. So it's sort of like you could just let it go. I feel like it, for me personally, but it doesn't. I don't know. I it would have made more of a difference if he was like still in jail and still like it only had been like a couple years after, or you know, some where like yes, it makes a difference that he's being like cleared of charges and stuff. But at the same time, it doesn't really at the point that it, it does get cleared. 
True, but then, right, the argument to be made, like, you know, as long as you're alive, like, right. you're, it, it matters to you, you know, like, right. if it's mm -hmm. you, like, yeah, and, and he's sort Carl of like, said it didn't really matter to him, it really it, did, it, it really yeah. did a lot to him, and, and I yeah. think Carl was kind of a substitute for Joe's grandpa in some ways, mm -hmm because they would have been about the same ages and stuff. And I don't know. I just think there was some kind of a correlation there. Mm -hmm. Right. Joe didn't, wasn't close to a lot of people in his life. And no. mm -hmm. to have these recurring conversations with Carl and to tell him about his grandpa, like mm -hmm. sort of formed a little bit of a bond. I, I still don't think I would have gone to the links that he did. So let me just go over the code quick because I'm just thinking in terms of like how I would answer this question and I just feel like the code, I won't read the whole code, but I'm trying to find out where it is right now. Pretty it's much like it's like the fox jumps yep, the over. The brown fox jumps over the lazy mm. dog. Mm -hmm. um, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy brown fox. dog. Yep. Yeah, hey, I actually remember which, which side of the page that the code writing <laughs> hey, was on. So oh, okay. I'm looking on that you side. It. You know, you got it. <laughs> but I mean, I even if find it though, for even if reason. you did figure out that, you know, he was innocent, Melissa, would you have still gone to the sus the suspect's house with a tape recorder when you know he's been accused? Or no. You know he got away with murder. And I don't think I would have gone to, and he didn't go to the, he didn't go straight to the suspects, did he? He did. He went to oh, the he dad's did. house, okay. which he thought was. But he was didn't do suspect. all of that right away. He went to the, he went to the. He did police, go to the police. Yeah. And they and said, no, like. 286 has the broken code on it. But yeah, they, then he was like, okay, yeah, he went to the police, but the police were like, yeah, we're basically not going to do anything. We, don't, we have enough just looking exactly. at we don't current, current things, yeah. And so right. he went to the... the but I think that's like, a key, that, I think that's a key part of, of it all. Because he so, did just try to do what makes sense. Like, he did try to just leave this in the hands of, of, the, um, of the authorities. Um, Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I like, don't know. even still, like, okay, you go to the police. Mm -hmm. They say, well, they we probably won't be able to get around to it for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, would you still go to someone that you thought sus that you suspected of killing someone years ago? Would you go to their house and try and get a confession, pretty much, from them? Well, I think you have to remember, Joe was a twenty-something-year-old cocky male. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Like, what if you weren't a woman who maybe would? You know, we've been, you know, we have, like, that sort of sense, like, be aware of your surroundings, be safe, you know, like, right. don't take a situation, like, for granted, where, like, men just walk around and they well, don't even think about that. Okay, well, then, to right, they're like, great, about, I'll get in a fight, who cares if I get my that. ass beat, like, I mean, like, how about after that, after he's been world. kidnapped That's and true. almost he murdered. did get abducted, right? He, I mean, he then decided to go to the murderer's son's house to try and get, like, <laughs> That's true. like, like, that to me is like, okay, you already had a close encounter. Like, do you think you are a cat with nine lives? Like, right. Yes, he's a cocky 20-year-old. Yeah, you already had one, <laughs> so it's not going to happen again. <laughs> but I just, I just feel like... Mm -hmm. I no, know. I hear what you're saying completely. And I, I think it would have worked better if... Um, I think it would have worked a ton better if there had been more of an established relationship that w what you said, Mom... Like, if the author was really trying to make Carl into his father, like, his grandfather figure, mm -hmm. and, like, he's really feeling close up to this guy, and, like, he makes more connections with his grandfather, and, like, there's no doubt in our mind that, okay, he's definitely seeing this guy now as, like, a grandfather figure that mm -hmm. um, I feel like the love overpowers all of the crazy things that you might have that you might otherwise not do if it was just some some person, person you know yeah, yeah that's like, true like would but you go we to don't... those lengths if it was your spouse or your right oh right. yeah so right. like my kids. Yeah. I feel like if that had been more established it would have been more believable but you're right the way it's it's given to us 
Carl is still kind of just someone he's doing a biography on. See, and I took it that there was more to it than that. I read I mean, more into it than that. Yeah, they became more friends-ish, but even still, like, they barely know each other. True, right, and that's, that's, that's what I'm like saying. It's like the right it's... thing to do. Like, if you have, I don't know, like... If they, See, and I think they... part of the guilt of not being able to save his grandfather... Yeah. That could have played into it. Kind of, you know, he wanted to do this for Carl before Carl died because he only had a month or so left to live. If mm -hmm. that, or a couple months. Maybe yeah. I'm the odd one out. I just think. No, why would I think. It, why would I? Think, I, I, I think <laughs> you're. Com I, I I completely agree. I, I just think that it would it would work a lot better. His actions would would work a little more in my mind if the author had set up the relationship between Carl and himself, like a like, little more. Yeah, like, yeah. no doubt in my mind that he's seen Carl as his grandfather. Right. Like, and that would make more sense to me, but but I, I agree with that idea that it just, it does seem like, like, oh man, like, man, that sucks. Like, here, I'll just, like, we know the code. I tried going to the police. This is what happened. I'm just going to hang out with you until the end of your life. Like, that probably would have been... More realistic. More realistic. And, yeah, or say, I just don't know like, what else to do. Right. right. Like, did Carl like him putting himself in danger? Right, like, he's like, literally Jones. risking his right. life. Yeah. Right. And save a dying, or to, to clear the name of a dying man. Right. Right, that's... I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, um... Like the stealing the trash, sure, I could see, I could see that easy, easy peasy. Like you're not actually interacting with anyone; you're just kind of trying to be sneaky and like <laughs> grab some evidence and go. But like the actual interacting with people that you, in your mind, did this crime, like that just yeah, to me seems right. On the flip side, um, kind of a completely different way to to ask the question, but. Um, knowing that the actual rapist slash murderer is still out there, like, I don't think, again, that the author gave us a reason to believe that Joe cared about saving lives of people in the current time. Like, I didn't feel like he was really feeling, oh, I need to get, I need to nail this guy to save the public. No. Yeah. Like, no. So, save, save other women. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, there was none yeah, of that. So. <laughs> Yeah. Carl, which yeah. yeah, I guess for me sort of then just made that that tie like mom mentioned. There's just the, that emotional mm -hmm. connection and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, it just would have been nice to have a little a little more oomph to believe that they had that intense like connection. Yeah, yeah. Um sorry, so dogs then, coming in and yeah. out. <laughs> for a second with your chair, it looked like you're wall was like a painting mm. like, it, it was weird i don't know it was like the light mm -hmm. in your chair and then the light on the tiny bit of like sun right behind your shoulder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like they lined up as sort of the same light hitting it and it almost looked like they were in the same room together <laughs> <That's pretty. laughs> or something mm. i know that's random okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, oh. So, which character, if any, did you identify with the most, and why? I don't think I really identified with any. Maybe, oh. maybe if I was, like, the detective that he called, and then, like, <laughs> snuck off and, like, was waiting to, like, catch him in the bushes, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I could see doing that, like, someone called and then just, like, going to help him, but I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I liked reading it. I liked all the characters, but I didn't feel like I really identified with any of them. So, you know, I, I could say I d identified a little bit with Joe um, just in that struggle of what do you do with, what do you, how to do the right thing and what you have to give up, making choices on giving up things to do the right thing. Um, you know, it's, I think I could identify also with Carl a little bit and 
sometimes, well, just because sometimes you get to the point where you just don't know what to do and the future looks bleak. I don't think I would have just given up and gone to prison, though. So, <laughs> um, that seems a little... Yeah, fair enough, though. Yeah. I, I didn't you know, I mean, there's like different that. aspects of every, not everyone, but, mm -hmm. but um, you know, and Lila, you know, I understand her aversion to wanting to keep her space and, and make a different life from herself for herself than when she was in high school and... Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there are little bits of many characters that I could identify with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, a little bit of some of the things Joe was dealing with and um, and also a little bit of what Lila uh, was going through and just how she was. I kind of can identify with both of them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not Joe's adversity or just, just going off and doing risky things, like going over his house, but you know, some of the other stuff, like I can kind of, I can identify with and like taking care of his, his brother and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I didn't really identify too much with any one character. Um, I would say maybe Lila, I, I could see I identified with, um, just like the, you know, she was just trying to you know, make a new name for herself and, and do good and um, just trying to find stability and she found a nice friend in, in Jeremy and like even Jeremy's simplicity, like there's parts about him that I, I relate to. It's like, yeah, like I just need like comfort of like familiar things sometimes and like I'm, you know, like... <laughs> Sometimes I will, there's a reason why Harry Potter gets watched a lot in this house and the Boondock Saints gets watched a lot. It's like my exactly, comfort movies. Like, exactly. If I need that like familiarity yeah, of right. things to like yeah. de-stress and I'll just mm -hmm. pop one of those in and I'm good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We hope you've been amused by our antics, inspired to read, and maybe even feel encouraged to find or create your own book club. At 100 subscribers, we are doing a book giveaway. At 200 subscribers, for our fifth round reading, we will randomly pick from your book suggestions. So we encourage you to share our channel with other book lovers and book lovers to be. In this book, the main character risked his life to prove the innocence of a dying ex-prisoner. Is this something that you might have done given the right circumstances? If so, what would those circumstances need to be? Share your thoughts. Join the discussion in the comments below. Also, remember to check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And feel free to email us at thegalamoffrigals at gmail.com. We'll see you next week for part five of our discussion on the life we bury. Happy reading.